All right, my friends, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you, can you actually video edit on one of these Mac minis? I've got the six core i5 processor with no GPU, no eGPU, and we'll be showing you the performance inside Final Cut Pro. What can you do? In short, you can actually edit 4K footage. That, that part of it works well. It's just the problem comes in if you try to overlay any graphics or use any of the rendering tools. But I'll be showing you exactly how that works on the Mac mini. Enjoy the show. So this is a, a 4K project with files coming straight out of my A7 III camera, video files, 4K, 100 megabits. Let's see if it handles the footage. All right, so I'm showing you here an ultra wide monitor. It's 1440p. I can't show you the whole screen at the time, but I'll show you what's going on in my Mac. So I've got um, a bit of Visual Studio in the background and lots of tabs in Chrome. And this project, if you check it out, it is a 4K and 25 frames a second. I'm using ProRes LT. LT is faster than 422 and it uses less space. So I always use LT. I haven't noticed any difference with that. Next up in preferences, I always have my background rendering turned off and I always leave files in, in place. So all the files, they're not actually on my Mac mini, they're on my SanDisk Extreme drive. If any frames drop, it's gonna stop the recording. So we'll see how it performs, if it's clugging and all that stuff. Now when I'm editing, I always edit at 2x speed, it just makes things a lot faster. And as you can see, I'm jumping around. Things are looking good and fast. I'm even gonna... There's like no problems that I've noticed. Things look good. And recording color correction. So for example, in this, this scene, the lighting is very harsh. So what I've got is a little bit of color correction applied. And as you can see... So it's time to check the camera and see how you develop this develop. I can actually play that back and things are, are looking fine, but it's not super perfect. If you are trying to render out anything intensive, for example, if I tried um, making making her a bit cartoonish, so straight away I'm getting a notification that playback has to be stopped. But I've been showing you this in better quality, so what you can do is change it to better performance. And that will allow you to edit it without having the, the frame drops. Of course, if you do overload it with lots of overlays and that kind of stuff, you will need to render out the segments. But if you're just doing some basic stuff, basic files, you know, things seem to be running fine and fast. So I'm personally pretty impressed on how responsive it is. And I've only got eight gigabytes RAM. <laughs> so this is the limitations of having eight gigabytes in Activity Monitor. You can see that I've got some compressed RAM and I'm using the swap. So pretty much most of my memory is being used and this is what it leads to. I've hit play, but I've got the spinny progress bar while it has to uncompress the project and put it back into memory. Have you ever wanted to improve with jawline depth? All right. Now that that project's loaded in memory, it runs really fast. So I hit play and it appears on the screen. But if you do switch applications and have the Mac have to compress Final Cut Pro and then have to uncompress it back into memory, then playback. What? So for general video editing, it's all right to use the Mac Mini, but when you start using lots of rendering effects, you can see that it gets pretty slow. Here I'm just disabling the background off and on, and you can see it is a couple of seconds wait between edits, and I am on better performance. And for example, if I wanna move a bit of overlay text, uh, let's uh, move it downwards. And there's no update on the screen, need to wait a little while. So it's really slow if you're trying to do anything that requires graphics, you know, um, rendering based effects. But if you're just editing the flow of the shot, it was a pretty a nice breeze to use. It's just this kind of stuff, that's where it, it's uh, a bit painful and you'll probably need a GPU. On the MacBook Pro 555X, this stuff works no problems. Instantly moves. But on the Mac Mini, I think it's because it's using a really, really slow GPU, the HD 630. It just can't handle anything, really. All right, so on the MacBook Pro, the 555X, I can get away with two film grains before playback is broken up. 
let's see how it does on the Mac Mini with no GPU. It's, uh, I don't think it's gonna work. Let's see, frame drops, playback, and warn. All right, so I'm gonna try it with two. Oh my God, it failed. All right, let's see, can we do one? Can we do one? Come on, come on, you can do one. My friend, let's do one. No, you can't do one. So, uh, Vega Graphics can do four, and this, uh, this, this one can do none. But, of course, you can always switch it to better performance, and then you can even get more than two. So that's what you need to do, better performance. All right, my friends, that was pretty decent, isn't it? Oh, oh, okay, not the rendering stuff, but imagine sticking an eGPU in there. You've been living the life. Everyone's gonna be happy. Now, everyone I know in the history of the world loves a bit of Synbench. They don't try out apps, they just Synbench it away. So I'm gonna be showing you the Synbench score of the i5 Mac Mini, because it's not about using real applications. It's all about this Synbench application. How good does it do? Like, woo, get a good score, my friend. What is it gonna get? So over here, our CPU is going 3.8 gigahertz. And we got a score of 739 for our first one. Let's run it again, because everyone likes running it as much times as Muslims like to pray. That's five times, you gotta do it five times a day. If you don't do it five times, you know, people out there won't be happy. Second time round, it's 822. 877 now what's cool here you can see the cpu is going at 3.9 gigahertz and the fans are locked in at 4600 it's not going higher the temperature is locked in at even 97 98 not hitting the 99s or the hundreds of the macbook pro so there's no throttling going over here in this application it's just cruising cruising on up all right and on the third test it just keeps on going up and up and up look 914 cb this is the i5